You send it, Garrett? Just did. <clears throat> Dude, how sad is it about Devo Samuel? What's up, everybody? We are back. Film nerds are back. Sorry for the hiatus. Had some scheduling conflicts. And, uh, yeah, we're excited for this one. How you guys doing tonight? Good, man. Well, Nick's taking a gulp of water there. Uh, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing well, man. It uh I'm not gonna lie, like there are there are lots of things that I have the pleasure of doing fantasy football wise throughout the week. Um, different podcasts, different things. And between like not having this last week and then pushing it one more day, I genuinely miss it. Like mm-hmm. I was like, man, like I feel like I haven't gotten a chance to like, well, first of all, I enjoy hanging out with you guys regardless. Uh-huh. But on top of that, like Thanks. Uh, I, I miss like getting to talk about these players in this, this context, in this setting, because, you know, as much as we come in here and we're like the experts or whatever, like I learn new stuff every time just by talking with Nick and with Jared, like there are new things that they highlight that I didn't see. And like, that's all good for me to improve as an evaluator. And so like, I, as much as like, this is a show that we put on, this is also like instrumental in my own development as an evaluator and me understanding the, the ins and outs of some of these players. Yeah, no, I think that's important because we always have our own biases and, and, and lenses we see through. And when you can see through someone else's lens and what they think and, you know, their knowledge, I, you know, everybody grows. I, honestly, you're, what you're talking about, that's what Twitter should be mm-hmm. in general. We all should be learning from each other, but instead of, you know, trolling and, all this kind of stuff. I mean, we, we all could have, you, you imagine if everyone's like, Hey, let's all talk about, you know, Tylen Wallace. And then you're going to learn so many facts and I mean, things about recruiting and, you know, probably his personal life and his game and stats. I mean, maybe you know, we should I'm start doing that, Nick. Like, well, hey. I mean, but I'm saying, but everyone doesn't make it educational. You know, when, right. I wish you, I wish you're going to, you're going to have a troll regardless of what you do. You're yeah. going to, yeah, yeah, it's true. Gotta yeah. love the trolls. There's so many of them in the YouTube comments. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um screw you but, all. uh but one cool thing is i i got to um i've met ryan mcdowell before and his wife about four or five years ago but i met the whole family yesterday they all came to madison where i'm at and we uh went and got some food and i got to met meet grayson and we were in a park you know playing and because he's got a 13 to 10 and then grace seven so it was pretty cool yesterday that's, that's cool. awesome man i met ryan last year in canton good dude right. Good guy. Did, was, did Aaron come or no? Um, no. Okay. Is that his wife? Yeah. Uh, she might have been in town, but I don't think she came out to work. Yeah, she wasn't. At least while we were talking around, she wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So first off, we switch softwares. So uh, streaming from a completely different software here tonight. We were having a lot of lagging and freezing issues the last few streams, and last stream it crashed in the middle of a of one with a player so that wasn't good but hey we've we uh persevered through the adversity and we're back here hopefully this one's running a lot smoother uh the chat said the audio sounds crystal clear which is good and they also said Donny, dynasty price is sounding sexy nick whalen looking <laughs> swole and jwack got that smolder thanks guys but uh tonight we got tylen wallace wide receiver from Oklahoma State, and Tamorion Terry, wide receiver from Florida State. Two of the top, uh, probably second-tier wide receivers Mm -hmm. in next year's class. Um, Terry is obviously a burner. Wallace, great all-around receiver from what I saw. And unfortunately, he had that torn ACL injury that probably kept him from coming out in the draft last year. Um, I would think that's why he went back to school because a lot of people thought he – he was going to come out um, big producer, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. What do you, what do you guys think? Oh, no, I'm very excited. I'm just looking in the comments and somebody's wanting to know if we're going to watch a uh, Joyke bell. Uh, Bell. So, you know, I know there's a lot of Joyke bell fans out there, so I'm sure we got to, you know, maybe, maybe Matt Asiata, we can get in here, you know, some of those studs of the game. Um, Honestly, honestly, cool career though. Joyke bell. I don't know where, um, was it Pittsburgh State? I think he came from, uh, out of Nebraska. So it's a. Uh, I don't know. You probably did a no. report on him. Uh, hold on, not Pittsburgh State. Wayne State, I think, out of Nebraska. Um, but yeah, a cool story. 
He probably but uh, no, I'm, I'm excited. I think these are two good prospects. Um, you know, I, I after watching again, I'm more down on Terry. I'm a little bit higher, <sighs> but not as high on Tylen Wallace. Um, in one of my Debbie drafts this year, I had the choice of picking between them. I took Tylen Wallace. Um, so I'm invested in him. I like him, but it's going to be cool to see what you guys think and the rest of the clips too, because how we do this is we all take a couple of games. Um, right. And so, you know, it's going to be good to see what you guys got out of it as well. And uh stream, check this out. Woo! I can write on the screen now. So should be fun. <laughs> I Don't worry. I'm not letting Nick control the thing. God, we'd be here for three hours. Boom. if we did It's that. not a coloring book. <laughs> No, nah, just kidding. Uh, so that that should that should add a nice little flavor to it. Uh, let's get into it though. Sounds good. We got Tyler Wallace up first. Um, I think Garrett. I think I'm starting with uh, yours here first. Uh, I didn't have Iowa State. If that's who they're playing there. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, he comes out here. This is mine. This is my <laughs> cut up. I don't, I forget who I put first. That's hilarious. Obviously, yeah, I think it's yours. Oh wait, nope, it's mine. Just kidding. <laughs> obviously, we start off uh, with a missed block here. Um, this is something kind of that popped up on tape every now and then with him when I was watching him. Kind of lacks a daisical effort, not real physical. Just comes out and completely whiffs, and this guy helps you know seal the edge, keep contain, and force Chuba back inside. So you'd like to see him come out and drive their feet. Get up in the guy's grill, driving backwards. So, can you go back to the beginning of that play? Yeah, I just want to see what the design is for Chuba. Because I mean, he he's aiming inside half, and his feet get too close together. That's why he gets around him. He's at wider base, but I don't know where his aiming point is for Chuba. Yeah, no, nah, that's a he probably should have been middle instead of jumping so far yeah, inside. Yeah, looks like they're trying to make an alley here. But Jaywack, I I noticed that as well. There were quite a few times where it was. Uh, either really poor technique or, you know, not much effort there. And he's not the biggest guy in the world either. So, um, you know, he doesn't have quite as much, of, <laughs> but as much of the same leverage Sorry. as other guys. I had to do it one around. time. You, could, you can help yourself. I'm five. How, how did you guys see that? Huh? How did you guys see that? Oh, you're watching it on that screen. I need to share the other screen with you guys. Sharing the wrong screen with us? For, with you two. Yeah, not the stream. Uh, I, was, I was sharing the... Uh, I don't say we do usually have the full game film so we can see it better. Yeah, but, my bad. Yeah, there we go. Yep. That does help, actually. Little bubble screen here. Physical run after the catch. And, dude, that stiff arm down the sideline is crazy. Watch this. Gets Ooh. low, runs those two dudes over that can't tackle. <laughs> Come just on. Just throws them off him. Come on. So, like, you don't even have to make a tackle. Just get him enough to get him out of bounds. Yeah. yeah. That's that's disgraceful. Let's run it back here. And, Big total and, defense. And for his size, too. Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, for not being great blocking, but doing this. And this right, isn't the first time exactly. he's done that. Yeah, he's a physical player. Um, not when he's not asked to block. That's that's what I noticed, which is weird. Is it an effort thing? You know. What I like yeah. here, at this angle, you can see. So he's on the sideline, then he leans in for the stiff arm to give himself a little bit more room in case he gets pushed out. Yeah. Yeah, he's only six foot, a buck eighty five, which, like I talk about every time, probably means he's five eleven, one, <laughs> you know, upper one seventies. So yeah, he's not a big dude, but uh, he he's a much more physical player with the ball in his hands uh, at the catch point uh, than you would think uh, think a guy of his size. Yeah, I noticed that too. So good route here. Doesn't get the Woo. ball, but completely sells this sluggo. Um, he shows shows the head back to the quarterback, which really helps sell it. Mm -hmm. Good route runner. No wasted steps, no wasted movement. Doesn't get the ball, of course, because safety's helping over top, but opens it up for uh, the tight end up the seam. Right. Yeah, he's the reason that happened. Yeah. 
they know they got a guard number two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you saw yeah. that safety breaking right away. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I initially thought of Wallace, I thought, you know, James Washington went over the top, all that kind of stuff. But the more you watch him, he's really a technician. He's such a great nuanced route runner. Yeah. I agree. Makes some fantastic contested catches. This one right here to get the foot in the back of the end zone, come down with this. What do you what do you think his uh what do you think his forty is? Because I don't think he's like a true burner. I'd say four, four five two. Yeah, that's right kind of what there. I was thinking. I agree. He well, he I, almost I mean, reminds me of a smaller and maybe slightly faster uh, Keenan Allen. Was kind of some of the stuff that I saw in his game. I like him to like Robert Woods. Okay, I can see that. I'm not sure I have a comp yet, but I don't hate but, those. But again, Robert Woods was number two in college, so there we go with the number comps again. There it is. Just a great catch. Mm-hmm. Those over the any, shorter the ones. The other angle or no? No, I didn't. It, it wasn't worth putting on here because they didn't capture it. Oh, I got you. Okay. Because I mean, another to, bubble. To get the release. To get the release by him in the end zone, there he had to use his hands pretty well. Is my guess. Now, what I really like about this one here is look how far away from his body that catch is. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's above his head and slightly behind him. Um, so for him to be able to not only make the catch, but then be able to get upfield and make the play that he makes, that's it's pretty nice. Yeah, and you see three defenders here in the area. Um, so great job of them getting a hat on the hat. But, I mean, he beats this guy the to the angle. edge. So, so, so bad. Yeah. The angle. Uh, Kylo Strawberry says he was going to say a smaller Nikhil Harry. That is not even close to a comp I would have. <laughs> Harry's, Harry's good at contested catches. It's not even close, dude. Physical. Well, I mean, I, just, I don't see it. I'm sorry, oh, man. Way to be I mean, very nice, Harry's Nick. Big and thick. Well, it's me. <laughs> it's, <honest. laughs> um, it's just me, man. Good, well, it's me. And, but uh, uh, Harry's not a good route runner either. Good job of understanding his angles, though. As soon as he caught the ball, he turned into a ball carrier. Yeah. Beat he the angle. Well. I like that. Yeah. Oh, this would be a good angle. Yep, got wide. Man, look at that vision, too, to cut back inside. Mm-hmm. He's good. I like him, man. He's got a lot of good yak plays. Mm-hmm. Efficient mover. And I watched a little bit of him last year just preparing for the, the rookies and stuff, thinking he was probably going to come out. Um, so it was nice to kind of get a refresher on him this past week. Just another slogo. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he has this route down. Look at it. Look at the way he shows his eyes back to the quarterback here. He's selling it. Uh, that help, helps bring this defender down, makes him bite, and then he explodes back upfield. No wasted steps. Makes the contested catch. Gets Not a late throw by the quarterback. Down. Yep. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Great body control, focus. Almost gets two feet down, but gets that left foot down. Six points. Ah, oh, now we're to me. Hello, Garrett. What up, Andy? Are we sure, are we sure this is his game? <laughs> are you sure, Jared? Are you sure? <laughs> All right, I'll let it run. Yep, we'll let it run one time. Woo. Oh, body control, man. Yeah. All right. So that's exactly what I was looking to highlight here. Cause obviously, um, you know, this is, this is scramble drill type play. He gets upfield, but another one that's thrown behind him uh, and, and uh, uh, the throw that's slightly too high there and the, be able to control the ball and bring it in there. And did you see his, him turn his body there too? Now his momentum was kind of already shifting him that way. Let's keep the, the ball away from the defender. Um, there's just a lot of nuance to his game. That's, that's really, really nice to see. Was this designed for him to run that inside? Or is that just him? I, I don't know. That's what I was wondering too. Cause let's see what the, what are they running here? Cause my guess it wasn't, he wouldn't go, he wouldn't release that close to the sideline and then break in, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what the concept was with the slot guy run. It's the flat. Just a I thought out. it was like a space play. Like he's just getting out know. of the way. Yeah. Space. Unless, unless that's one of those where he needs to do one of those deep hooks and find the hole in the zone, but yeah, it could have been a curl flat. Probably not though. I mean, it wouldn't 
That was weird. Yeah. Quarterback get yelled at for that one, throwing it back across your body over the mm-hmm. middle, but hey, made a play. All right, let's run this one back here, Garrett. Yep, we'll let it run first time through. <laughs> Kylo Strawberry said, damn, shout me out. I'm new to this film study stuff. Cut me some slack. Laugh my ass <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, all right. So this was a really long developing play here. Um, but once again, it was it was two, you know, two plays back to back where here he's actually in, in double coverage. Uh, they clearly he, he had a very good game against Texas. Clearly, they were keying in on him. And for him to go up between two defenders and once again make the ball or make the catch away from his body up in the air, it's it's just not as easy as he makes it look. Uh, and that's one of the things I came away from was he, he's just a really, really smooth operator. Like he makes a lot of things that are not easy to do look relatively easy. Yeah, the quarterback made it way harder than it needed to be here. Watch this guy. Wow. Oh, geez. Yeah, he's wide open. Yeah. Wallace did his job. He made <clears> the <throat> gonna put his hand up. Yeah. Me, me. <laughs> and then there's there's even an extra defender over there besides the two covering him. Wow. Um, the one thing that I like, if you want to play this back, j Wack, is, is watch his head. He works his way through all this traffic and does not turn to look for the ball until he clears that underneath the defender. Watch right here. Then he looks. Which is exactly when you need to look. That, that keeps all of your speed and momentum until the ball could arrive. He's great at tracking the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. He 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 spots it very well. And the adjustment that he has to make. I mean, yeah. you see at one point there, he's backpedaling a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that adjustment that he had to make on the football, um, man, it's not easy to do. And that's that's what I kept coming back to over and over again. He makes plays that are not routine look relatively routine. Yeah, that's look at that. That is tough. Falling away, backwards, grab. Damn, it's a nice play. All right, so we're gonna see two in a row. Yeah, where uh, uh, they're both blocking plays. Uh, this is this is genuinely a little bit of a concern for me for the next level. Uh, he, he's got to clean that up, and and fortunately, it's stuff that can be taught. Um, <laughs> but I mean, it's just it's not good effort. It's not good technique. And he, I mean, because of his his defender, those plays get blown up. I mean, what is, he's what waiting is he doing? Instead of attacking. Oh, yeah, he's just sitting flat-footed. What's up on the block? How's it going, man? Gets beat inside once. If you guys got any once. questions, drop them. Let's go. Let's get into it a little bit here. We can and, talk and about whatever honest. the hell. Either way, I'll be honest. What? Be oh yes, Nick. Oh yeah, Nick will be. <laughs> oh yeah, Nick will be honest. Never personal. I'm just. That's what I think. <laughs> Never get in a Twitter beef with Nick. <laughs> bring your facts. <laughs> you bring your facts because he will bring his. I always said that. I'm like, you better come correct when you're gonna argue with Nick. Because he, he usually wins. All right. So this one was a both for me. This was this was a both play. Um, I don't love how much he gets shoved to the outside here. Uh, once again, we, we talked about how he's not a he's not a big, imposing physical receiver. I'm not even confident he didn't step out uh, at the top of his route there. I can think he back, stepped out. Go back to the beginning, Gilak, like and just but... go like step by step here. Because I don't think he I don't think he threatened inside, which made him release further outside. Well, and he was already lined up pretty far outside. Right. So he needs to do a better job getting the hands off. I mean, he gets thrown. Look how far he gets thrown. Yeah, but that's because he doesn't even step inside. Yeah. That's a so release. all of that I mean, he's was out of bounds here. was a, yeah he was he was out of bounds a couple times because I think he stepped out again at the top of his route here. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he stepped out by quite a bit. But despite all of that garbage, uh, he's still able to come back to the ball and make a play. Uh, after all of that. And so uh, it, it's kind of a both, but it was more of a negative for me on that one. Uh, just to, I, I want to see him be a little bit more physical there. And, uh, you know, he for the most part, this was kind of out of pocket for him. For the most part, I like his feet off the line, but that, was, that wasn't a very good one. All right, we got a question here. 
from Kylo. What value does C.D. Lamb return in year two? Is he borderline wide receiver one by then? On his team or for fantasy? Fantasy, I would assume. Wide receiver one. Okay. Top 12. Um, I would, I'm fine with borderline. I don't think he's going to be a wide receiver one until Cooper's gone. It's, it's yeah. really tough to sustain two, especially when you have another guy like Gallup there that's going to steal some targets. So it's not like it was when it was just feeling and digs. There's also a third player there. So just by the raw targets, I think it'll be tough, but I'm fine with borderline. You know, I could see in year two him being wide receiver 15, wide receiver 16. Like that wouldn't shock me. Will I project it? I don't know, but it wouldn't shock me. Yeah, he's got that. That's where I'm at. Sorry, Jay Wack. Yeah, he's probably wide receiver 15 to 20, I would say, based on age, but the production won't be there. Interesting, by the way, uh, if you take the second half numbers of the Cowboys, uh, and you took that as if, you know, per game basis over 16 games, uh, Gallup outproduced Cooper. So. This was one of his his many big plays on the season, uh, but I wanted to toss this one in here because uh, it was a it was an underthrown pass, um, and he lined up in the slot here, which he lined up in most of my games. He lined up almost primarily outside, uh, but he he beat his guy, but it was a way underthrown ball. But for him to still be able to go up and get it, turn around and make a play, now terrible job by the safeties or uh, yeah, that was just it was just terrible job all around. Um, but for him to be able to come out back and make that play on a play where there was pass interference um, is I was very encouraged. I will say overall, I moved Tylen Wallace up some with, mm-hmm. with digging in more. Now mm-hmm. he's still not quite where Terry is and we'll get oh, to that. Oh my goodness. Are you but, uh, but I, I did, I did move him up um, over the course of this. He needs to get more physical though. Mm-hmm. He does. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think this is Nick now. Let's see here. Before we get into Nick's cuts, um, Superflexer FF, a.k.a. Zach, asks, are we starting to see more undersized guys at wide receiver? Judy and Lamb this year. Wallace next year. You can include Rondell Moore in there. We don't know if Judy and Lamb will succeed, but do we think there's a trend towards smaller BMI guys starting to emerge at the NFL level? Yeah, I do think so. This has been trending for a while now. Uh, It is all about the separation game, and I think that's because of the rules. It's a lot more uh, defenders cannot make contact, and so because of that, if you can't separate, it's not going to matter as much because, you know, it was the big wide receiver game. I mean, you look, years ago, it was Green and Julio and Jeffrey and Dez, and all those guys were at the top, and now it's not the case. And it's all about how, how you can move. And I, I think offenses have switched that way too. You have RPOs. RPOs aren't based on posting up a guy and how big you can be. Brandon Marshall's another guy back in the day too. It's about getting the separation and, you know, making easy reach for your quarterback. So yeah, I think, I think for sure. Now, is there a level of how small you can be where I'm worried? I'm worried about Marquise Brown. Um, you know, I think you have to have some strength, but I don't think that, just stopping the guy in the line of scrimmage. I mean, on the block here says that they're going to press Wallace out of the play at the next level. I don't I don't think that's the case. I think Wallace has good enough to press break. I think that was a bad play. I've seen a few of those as well. But overall, I think he has the game to get off the press break. If you're smaller, BMI-wise, and can't get off the line of scrimmage, I have an issue. If you can, then you're okay. Well, and and I haven't seen nearly the same amount of press coverage as we used to see. Like I don't, I don't think that's as common where where teams are for sixteen games. We're going to see a ton of press coverage. Um, I, 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 at least that's what I've noticed. I don't know about you, but uh, I, I haven't seen as much press coverage as as we used to see. Yeah, I agree. And the game's getting a lot more spread out as well. Spacing, get those guys that can move in space. Mm-hmm. So, so this one, this one is subtle for me. If you want to go kind of step by step, so if you want to stop it um, at the start there from the mm-hmm. So this corner twelve is way far inside. I mean, this is probably I don't know quarter, quarter, half. I would guess. Um, and Wallace knows he has to break inside here, and so watch him stem inside, and then get straight vertical and wait for twelve to flip his hips, and then he breaks inside. I mean, it's just so amazing. 
he doesn't break inside till that corner's hips are flipped, and he look, he knows it too. He's like, "Dang it, I flipped my hips." It's just it's just good route running. Or well, sorry, he moved outside, which is yeah. moved outside, and then it's, he like shimmied out. Yep, wide open then. And that's just and that's subtle things. You, you have to know where on the defender you have to attack to get that separation. It's a good catch too. Obviously. Yeah, good good hands catch. He's always catching with his hands. I like seeing that. Oh, always. Yep. That is a good kind route. Of sacrifice his body too. Like he's like, oh, I'll get some more yards and just. Mm -hmm. So this is another one where his aiming point. He knows he has to go inside. He forces the corner further outside before he comes in. I mean, he's smooth on those slants. Mm -hmm. See, look at the corner here. Open his hips outside. Yeah. Boom. Inside. Win. Busted. That guy's, yep. It's perfect. If you had a now, quarterback leads him a little more. Now, again, I'm a, um, I'm a Tyler Wallace fan, but I, I've kind of found some more negatives here than you guys have, have talked about. So that'll probably be some more of these other plays we'll get to. But again, this was behind him. Adjusted well. Hold on to it. Press is 100% more about footwork and hand hand technique rather than BMI. I don't. I wouldn't say BMI really factors into that at all on the block. Unless you have the strength. But BMI is just a measurement of, you know, your body mass index. So it's just like a, I guess it doesn't really measure strength, you know, mm. per se. I bet Rondo Moore has great BMI, though. Oh, yeah, he's solid. Woo. So this is positive and negative. Negative, he pushes off. Oops, sorry. thought that was the other view. So he pushes off here and he gets flagged. But I do like that he tries to use his hands on the top of a route. It wasn't really needed here. But that quick deceleration back to the ball, catching feet and bounds, I thought was awesome. I'm surprised they called that. I mean... That was pretty yeah. subtle. Right. The, the guy went flying, though. I mean, in the NFL, they do that all day, so I don't know. Exactly. That's... Yeah. I mean, Arthur extends his arm a little bit further, but for a smaller guy to try and use his hands, I, I like it. Just yeah. don't get called. Speaking of uh, of those those penalties, did you see the challenge of the pen of uh, of pass interference calls got, got removed? Right. It needs I'm, to. They, I'm they never so thankful. It. I didn't see that. Yeah, it got. It was. This was a couple weeks ago. But okay. Yeah, they they got rid of that. It was a one year trial, and they're like, nah. Yeah, that was stupid. They're like, oh, we're just not overturning anything. They yeah, I was gonna say they almost never did, and I feel like when they did, it was at random. It was yeah. like, wait, they overturned that one? I didn't like it because it kind of gave the ability to maybe fix a game. You know, it's pretty subjective. Yep. Well, they weren't yeah. objective about it. Like, it drove me right. nuts. Right. I didn't have that last play, and so I don't know why that was in there. But yeah, this one here, I just like the. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like his deceleration here. Look at that. And he's so on balance when he makes this break. I thought it was phenomenal. I mean, he's so fundamentally sound. He is, is. fundamental. Little NCAA football route here. Well, and, and this one I think is so. This is this is knowledge here. So he's he's getting bracketed right. That this underneath the defender is trying to push him. So he he gets small, but he still knows he has to break outside. So he still goes back further inside before he goes outside, despite that defender messed up his route. Yeah. So it gets this guy to move, gets yeah. the safety to move, and mm -hmm. it's just it's just so subtle, but it's amazing. Again, he doesn't get the target. Doesn't matter to me. The route's what matters to me. Absolutely. Yeah, I have one of those with Terry where he didn't even get the ball, but I didn't care. Get your weight up, son. So this is a, this is another one where he didn't he didn't do anything inside and got pushed all the way to the sideline. So he needs to make it a two way go off of his release more consistently. So even though I said, you know, overall I was a fan, um, 
are we concerned about one is strength mm-hmm. and two, I think he's probably just an average athlete. Either one of those things concern you at all, or is it still, yeah, he should easily be top 10, maybe even top five type receiver in this class. As of here. right now, I think he's definitely top 10 as just as of right now at this very moment. Mm-hmm. Cause I probably couldn't name guys off the top of my head that I would put in front of him. Um, around that it that area but uh i definitely it definitely concerns me because i think it limits his upside for sure what about you nick um he's gonna be i mean like i said robert woods van jefferson i think he's a slot guy in the nfl honestly i think so as well which i I thought it was interesting that he ran primarily on the outside Mm. because i i agree Pretty good route there, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so, the, yeah. So, this finish. play. Sorry, I didn't even talk about it, but he, he drops it here. I saw him drop a few passes, and this is a this is a concentration when he tries to make a move really quickly after this. Um, I don't know if you kept the other angle or not, Jared, but I didn't. Um, you know, so there were a couple of drops there, and then I saw co- uh, quite a few contested receptions. He did not come down with. He comes down with some amazing ones, but there's some he doesn't. But to answer that, I mean, he's not a player with a huge ceiling. That's that's not who we're looking at. I mean, he doesn't have the four four flat, the huge body, um, can win contested, can can do everything. But I think he's going to help an NFL team more than maybe fantasy. Um, but if he's a slot guy and gets in a good position, like Robert Woods late in his career, he's going to help you. If he gets in the position where he's Robert Woods early in his career, Buffalo, it's going to be trouble. You know, so it's really going to depend. So, and we'll get into it more, but the exact type of reasoning you just laid out is the reason that I would take Terry at this point over Tylen Wallace, because I'm looking specifically for fantasy purposes. I think Tylen Wallace is years ahead of him as far as technical proficiency at the position, but there's a lot of ceiling things that Tamari and Terry has. We'll get to that in a second though. Right. Wait till you see my negatives. Anyway, so there <laughs> he pushes off, gets away with it, gets the separation late, <laughs> which is the strength stuff, right? That we're worried about, but he gets the technique and he adjusted the ball. So I thought it was a pretty good play. <laughs> Nick, you're funny, man. Wait till you hear all my negatives. <laughs> uh, I I almost didn't want to put any negatives on Terry because I figured all of Nick's were. So I'm not a yeah, hater. It was pretty I, mixed. Actually, I actually liked Terry before I watched this film more. He's definitely got some things to work on, but we'll get into that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you meant to put this one. I think you said that he was uh, settling into the, the zone yeah. here. I think yeah, it's so cover this two. Is a, this is what I like. So right here, it's it's cover two, soft cover two, and he realizes it and just stops. Yeah. He doesn't get a target, but it's just great that a a wide receiver knows this. Like you need to know defenses and he does. Yeah. Corner gets a good sink. Mm -hmm. That's probably why they should have hit him. I don't want you to hit him here. Right on the sideline. Yeah. I mean, he's got his back turn. He probably just should have hit him. He could hit him. Well, he continues to roll out here. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me, but yeah. Young quarterback. See a freshman. Oh, bro, bro. I'm not sure. Spencer Sanders. Uh, I believe he was a true freshman last year. Yeah. Almost comes down with this one. Yep. Yeah, so this is another one. So like I said, there there's some contested receptions he does not come down with. I thought this one was this is a bad ball, I think, by the quarterback. Um because it's too far inside. Yeah, really tough catch too. I mean he's mm-hmm. trying so, to pin it against his helmet. Yep. Yeah. So he comes out with some, doesn't come out with other ones. That was the one thing. That that in the hands were the two things that were negatives for me. Well, I, and inconsistent releases. See, I'm critical even the guys I like, Garrett. See? I believe that. Yeah, I think he's a day two, day two pick, third round, probably, wide receiver. Maybe well, second. If Van, if Van can go two, I think Wallace can go two. This he's definitely got the production behind it. Mm-hmm. This is an unbelievable catch. Yeah, that is. That's a tough right, catch. Falling down. Right off the turf. Needed the first down. Got it. The back view is real nice on this one. Look yeah, at that. Look at that. That's. Well, and, and he kind of settles, and then the quarterback throws him open. Then he has to 
burst again, I think. Well, Terry, some of these questions here. We yeah, let's some. get some. Cause I am going to run to the restroom real quick. Okay. Um, Outlook. Oh, here you go, Garrett. Here's what we can get into to start it off with. Outlook for J.K. Dobbins for the next five to ten years in the startup. Well, you shouldn't think ten years. But what do you think, Garrett? I'm a I'm a big Dobbins guy, and uh, one of the things that I talked about right away was one of the biggest knocks on Dobbins was he comes from this RPO offense with this really athletic quarterback out of college and he got the, the upgraded version of that in the NFL. Uh, and uh, it's, it's tough to say that there's uh, a more athletic quarterback, maybe even player uh, than Lamar Jackson. And so I think he's going to feast when you look at uh, Mark Ingram at age 30, average five yards a carry last year, Gus Edwards, who's a Jag, uh, average 5.3 yards a carry. Obviously, last year was the perfect scenario, so there will be some regression in that offense, but there's nothing telling me that he couldn't average similar types of yards per carry. Uh, the, he, there might be some cut into his workload this year, but I think long-term he's going to be the main guy in that uh, that rushing attack, uh, at least at the running back position anyway. And uh, I think I think he's going to do very well. And you're right, ten years is is a little too long to look at it. For me, I'm only worried about their first contract. Anything I get on top of that, I consider bonus. Mm -hmm. So I, I know we've debated this one before, Garrett. So mm -hmm. my my counters to the the Dobbins type have been Lamar Jackson hasn't thrown to running backs very often, and Dobbins is a different structure type. I mean, he's a lot lighter than Ingram and Gus Edwards. Sure. Um, you know, so I know, because I mean, Gus Edwards and Ingram, they're basically taking a gap dives, you know, on those read options and, and Jackson will go outside. Um, and then they also have Justice Hill for outside runs. So I, I don't know how he's going to be used, um, but I have a lot more concern with how great his ceiling is versus I think other people. Yeah, no, I, I get you, but I, yeah, I think he's, I think he is strong and I think he is well built for having a, a more slender frame. Uh, I'm not, I'm not as concerned about that. I, I had no problem with what he did between the tackles uh, at Ohio state and you're right. There will be a lot of inside stuff, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of speed option type stuff too, where uh, they're getting him out in space. Uh, and, and we know that he can make guys miss in the open field. That was one of the things that uh, he did very, very well. Uh, we'll, we'll see about the, the usage in the passing game. That is, that is definitely up in the air, but I think, I don't think it's going to be like, oh man, he's not used at all in the passing game. Like he had 15 catches. Like, I think he will still be used. I just don't think it's going to be to the level of, you know, Clyde Edwards, Alaire or Deandre Swift might be, um, I don't think it's going to be quite to that level, but 30, 40 catches a season, I think is, I, I could easily see that. Yeah, so J. Mike, what up, man? Came in, came. He's back. I don't know. Did you guys get to his question? I wasn't here. We have no, not. No, we didn't. We were okay. on uh, Dobbins. Dobbins. There's, an, there's another one up there too that was Kylo Strawberry. Should I? Um, so he's new to film study. What should I be looking for for running backs and receivers? Um, honestly, th there's just so much to look for. I think to start with, just start with one position and study what the play design is what the defender is doing. Cause sometimes a good play could just be a bad defender play, you know? Um, and then study some of the really good players in the NFL, what they do, what their techniques are. Um, I go frame by frame, you know, step by step, watch a play three, three to five times. Um, it, it's okay. If you only get through, you know, a few plays in a half hour, it's all about understanding. I think to start with, and then the quicker you understand the, you know, the more you can see and, more plays and quicker you can go yeah for sure sorry i was trying to retweet this out saying we're getting into terry <laughs> um but if you check out our nerd score on at the dynasty nerds website we do a uh, film score for all the prospects and everything we break down all the traits that we look at so that might be a good um, thing for you to look at just to kind of see 
you know, vision, acceleration, burst, power. Nick, we got to get you in on that next year. Stuff like that. I know you got all your own stuff you're doing, but on the nerd score. So Jennifer says my mic is my base. I don't know how I'm going to adjust that. If I just go further away, is that better? Mm, No, you sound more echoey. Yeah, let me know, Jennifer. I don't know how I'm going to adjust my... He's just, he's just got that low. He's just too mad. Sex for the whole rest of the podcast. <laughs> Let's get to Tamari and Terry now. Yeah. Terry is up. Oh, you missed, you missed J. Mike's tweet. J. Mike's. Oh, yeah. Uh, you question. cut me off when I was about to freaking go over that one. Uh, My bad. I <laughs> uh, said with the current commentary, it sounds like we are thrilled about Wallace. That said, where would we place Wallace? Were he in this current 2020 class? So for me, let's think about it. Probably like around the 11, 12 range, I would think. Probably right after Brian Edwards, Van Jefferson range in there. Um, 10 to 15. Part yeah, personally. Sounds, sounds about right to me because I can't quite put him with the uh, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman. I can't quite put him with those guys. Um, yeah, so he would probably be – Probably be right around that range. I think I'm right around that same spot. Van Jefferson, Brian Edwards. Um, yeah, right in there. Yeah, I, I would say... Brandon yeah, Ayuk. Nine. Yeah, I mean, it, anywhere 8 to 12, I think, would make sense. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking at my rankings here. That's right. All right, let's get into Terry, though. Terry, Mr. Terry. 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 Burner. From Florida State here, bigger wide receiver on uh, Tylen Wallace. Anybody have his measurables? Oh, you had you have me first this time. You mixed it up. Yeah, sorry. Uh, he is six foot four, and I think he was two oh five, two ten, something like that. All right, so go ahead and go back to that that first one here. So he's got AJ Terrell on him, who was a first round pick. Uh, by the Atlanta Falcons. So he's a very good corner. And overall in this game, Florida State got blitzed. Like, it was not a good game. Uh, Clemson, everything they did turned to gold. Uh, Everything Florida State did did not turn out well. Um, But one, I I like his feet off the line here. Now, this is not something he always does consistently. Um, So I want to clarify that. But I do like his feet off the line here. If you can start it back at the beginning. Here we go. One, two, that outside, he got him just enough to turn there to buy that outside, then crosses his face, uh, and he actually gets open here. Now, because of the fumbled snap and all of that, uh, it, it ends up being kind of a blown play. Uh, but, but I was good with this route. He had a couple, he had a couple yards on him uh, right off the top for that slant and could have been a big play uh, had it not been that fumbled snap. I almost feel like he's still growing into his like body a little bit. Is. Like he's like kind of slow moving. Kind of like I told you this on the phone, Gary, but he kind of reminds me like a little bit of DK Metcalf in that way. I, I have no problem with that comp. So once again, against Clemson, this was really the only play that meant anything for Florida State in this entire game. <laughs> um <laughs> And and it's not even necessarily a particularly good route, a particularly good catch, Um, but the raw – go ahead. Gary, are you saying the superstars, Kim Akers, couldn't do anything all game? (laughs) Wow, that's a surprise against a good opponent. You got to talk to 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 her boy. I'm not the Wow, that's weird. A a superstar couldn't do anything (laughs) against any good team his whole career in college. Weird. Okay, sorry. No, and it's okay. And it's okay route. It's nothing special. Um, he gets inside, uh, but it's just a, a body catch where the the corner over pursues. But you just see the raw speed and athleticism there. I mean, that's something you you just can't teach, especially at that size, at six foot four, and he's well built too. He's not the scrawny uh, Isaiah Hodgins type. I mean, he's got he's got some good girth to him. So. Can you go back again? I can. I do have that ability. Thanks. Oh, it's not AJ Terrell, first off, but still, it's a not good on play. This one. Yeah, I was. I was. I want to watch eleven because eleven had the the running start here, and then we can see the speed. So eleven is. Oh, Simmons. No, maybe it's not eleven. I'm sorry. That whoever's trailing him there. Yeah. Well, he slows yeah. up a little bit too. 
Yeah, but it was just, it was, because I mean, he had more of a running start to get Terry and Terry just separated. That just, that's good transition he had. So on to Miami. This was a both play for me. Um, so good comes back to the ball, splits the defenders. You see, once again, the athleticism. I want to see him not get knocked out of bounds there, though. Mm -hmm. That was the frustrating part. And you could tell he was frustrated about that, too. Um, good play leading up to that point. Want to see him keep his feet, stay in bounds. Get your body into him. Like, he's, yep. little, he's way smaller than you. Yep. And that might be a little bit more of, like you guys said already, his body and not being able to, you know, grow into it yet. So his balance is off. Mm -hmm. Yep. Whew. Someone asked who's winning, Terry or Wallace, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask Nick that. He's predetermined. Well, predestined. What I've looked at it already. I know. All right. So they give him a lot of space here. Uh, scramble drill. And he goes up and over this guy. Now, it was a lower throw, so it wasn't like he went way up and over. Uh, but it was a good contested catch here because – Honestly, if I'm being completely objective, and I'm a Terry fan, for a guy of his size, I would like to see more of this, where he's making good contested catches, because there's not as much of it. Now, part of that is because he's so fast that there's not as much opportunity as there is for some other players. Or they just stall out on the offense. Right. It's, it's not a good offense, but um, <laughs> good contested catch going over the guy here. Yeah. The other angle here? Yeah, so, okay. yeah watch the other angle. Well, I was going to mention that the oh, route's yeah. a little stand straight up. Yeah. Before his corner, break. Corner jumped it. That's why Horny, Hornybrook's terrible, first off, but Hornybrook couldn't throw it on time because he didn't get the separation. He, yeah. He didn't threaten him vertically. He knows he has help over top, too. So he's sitting. Mm -hmm. What is this safety doing? I have no idea. Why is he so far back and still backpedaling when there's no no threat vertical? <laughs> he said he knows he's got those wheels. This was a really nice whip route. Um, maybe one too many steps uh, on the turn, but for a guy of this size, because you mentioned DK Metcalf, and I think that is a good comp when we're looking at size and speed. He can't – DK Metcalf, I was never able to see him move this fluidly, especially in college. Um, I, what I saw, go ahead and keep it, keep it going. I really want to look at the whip part real smooth. I would like to see him get a little bit lower with his hips on that. I know it's tough for a guy that tall, but still for a player that is that big to be able to move that fluidly. Uh, and I still think uh, Jared, I think you're right. I think he's still growing into his body. Uh, I was impressed with, with seeing that, that play there. So I'm just, um, I'm a little confused here. So he's faking him to come out, right? Mm -hmm. So his faking step off the line of scrimmage for this release, why would he want to threaten outside? Do you know what I mean? Which allows for a cleaner release inside sure. when the corner is trailing the area that he's trying to go because to. Because he's eventually coming back out anyway. Is what right. You're saying. Right. No, I, I agree with you. And this is something mm -hmm. when we when we talk about both of the guys together, um, Wallace is light years ahead of, of where Terry is as a technician, as a route runner, as all of these things. But there are things at six foot four with that type of speed and the raw smooth athleticism. Like he's like, we, we talked about DK who's been, he had a very successful rookie season. I don't think he's as fluid as, as Terry is. I think Terry is a much more fluid athlete. There are things that he could do to improve, but his role on an offense, specifically speaking, because we're looking at for a fantasy football team. We're not necessarily looking for our NFL football teams on a fantasy football team. At any time, he can take one to the house, like at any time he can take one to the house. But also you just have a mismatch nightmare with somebody that's also that big with that type of speed. Uh, and I think he's he's got enough tools and he's growing enough because even I went back and watched some of his his uh, redshirt freshman year and this was his redshirt sophomore year. 
uh, some of the things that he improved on in his routes and things like that. Like we said, there's a lot of room to still go, but I think all of the tools are in progress. And I think the raw size speed combination is just going to be really, really good things for fantasy football. Now I have them like two wide receiver spots apart. So it's not like there's a drastic difference between the two, but if I'm on the clock, I'm taking Terry over Wallace. That's where I'm at right now, too. Basically, for all the same reasons you just stated. All right, Nick, convince us otherwise. Or well, is this I'm going to wait till we get through all of Terry. Um, is this you, you still, Garrett? No, this isn't me. This is not me. Must be me. <laughs> I fr- Dude, it's been a long week. It's been a long week. Unless it's me, I don't know. But I'm, this, this Boise State game was sad. First of all, even though Boise State. Oh, this is you, Nick. Oh, is it? Yeah. I remember okay. thinking like, because we all right, everybody were doing an NCAA fourteen college football, <laughs> Xbox Dynasty. Nick has Boise State, so when I saw him do this game, I was like, ah, I know why he wanted to yeah. see his. No, but his Boise players. came back. I mean, this is. I mean, because I, you know, I, people that don't know, I coached with Willie Taggart, Florida State's old head coach, who got fired mid year. They were up big on this game early. Um, they ended up losing. It was just, it was sad. Fumbles, just it was bad. But this was good, I thought, for Terry. I was, I mean, to bad. move at that size. Yeah, to move at that size. Bad play by 26 the corner, not to maintain outside leverage. But after you get through that initial wave, he cut back inside. And I thought that was a pretty good play. Um, see right here, 26 should stay outside. It's a bad idea to cut inside. And that was basically what Terry's game was predicated on was, was making big plays. Cause mm-hmm. you look at a lot of his games, it was three Good catches, luck. two catches, four catches, five catches, two catches. You know, he didn't have a massive amount of catches, but he did a lot with his catches. And then right here, it was the big one like that, that right there. I mean, that was a bad defensive play, I think more than a good offensive play, but right here, this cut here, I think made the play. Yeah. Great job of using his block. Mm-hmm. Right, this cut right here, because he yeah, that's yeah. like that goes from a twenty yard gain to what he had here at the touchdown. This cut, oh yeah, it ended up being what eighty almost. Right. See ya. Peace. <laughs> Tyree Kill. That's the picture I had at the beginning of the video. Oh, was it? Oh yeah. So this is, you know, my issue here was he jumps unnecessarily. Um, I think he body catches it. I did notice he body catches a decent amount. Right. I mean, doesn't really threaten this ver- this this defender a whole lot, but that's kind of maybe a little bit more tough to do when they give you so much room. But the deceleration part, that that transition from vertical to coming back to the football. Um, he needs to work on. Although he does come back here, but yeah, just he jumps for no reason here. And you're already six four, <laughs> so yeah. that's more. That's more time. Pretty decent route, ground. though. Honestly, it's not terrible. It gets, yeah. I'd like to see him sink. See exactly, yeah, and that's part of that deceleration. I think he needs to get used to that. But he yeah. has the transition to receiver or to runner quickly here. He has the idea to go outside, so I like mm-hmm. that part. All right, so this this year, this is late in the game. They need to make a play, and you know people will watch this play if you just play it, you know, fully again. They'll just be like, "He's okay, bad throw," you know, maybe a better throw he would have made a play, but he didn't convince this corner one hundred percent at all. He was going inside off of the release, and so th- his lack of separation here. Do you guys remember we used to do Denzel Mims? We did his film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So Mims was so good off his release, he could stack a corner. Yeah. Watch his first step here. He goes inside and watch the corner not give any crap about it. Yeah, it wasn't much. You know? And so then then the corner can push him outside. So now well, he has his, to release. His hips had already transitioned outside even while he was making that step. Exactly. Yep. So now he's pushed further to the sideline. Corner can stay in his hip pocket. And it's a, it's – you know, Jer- Jared knows as a quarterback that that's that's a tough ball to drop in that bucket out there, especially the other hash. All right, but if he would have came harder inside, 
like he did on that whip route for you, Garrett, where he faked outside and, and made the corner at least stay, he would have had a shot to stack him and make a play there. So, you know, those little things um, I see on film a lot. Yeah, him. he needs to clean that kind of stuff up for sure. Mm -hmm. He needs to tell a story. And this was, again, just consistently. Body catch. Doesn't body catch in. Come back to the football a little more. Don't wait on it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It was. It was an okay route, not a great route. Yeah, like you said. I mean, this is late in the game again. They're just protecting that. Don't get beat deep. Yeah, kind of giving up that underneath stuff. Yeah, so he needs to hands catch that one, and and that would be another one. Why does it? Why isn't he whipping out to the sideline there to transition to a runner when he need to make a play? He seemed pretty conservative. <laughs> J. Mike. He likes that one. I love that you have to tell a different story with your routes than what you're you're actually going. Be an actor. Yeah, and it's every play too. Mm -hmm. Nice job settling in that zone. Mm -hmm. Yep, I thought it was a pretty good play here. Because I I think I, I'm hoping after he's right here, he recognizes that it's zone mm -hmm. and lets the quarterback back shoulder him here i'm hoping that's that's what this is because he's still running but he's not going full speed you know yeah he's like so looking back he wants the ball mm -hmm. that safety actually had or not that safety who was that there whoever that was had a had a pretty good i think that's a cover six angle. is that right jared yeah. yeah that's what i was about to say i think it is cover six the linebacker playing the cloud yeah <clears throat> See, I had positive plays in here, Garrett. Yeah, terrible route here. I mean, because, in, again, that deceleration issue, the corner just, he, he doesn't have to bail hard. No, he was able to close really quick on it. Yep. Just stuck yep. in mud. I think yeah, he, uh, he can T step and he can drive to the football there, the corner. That's why, I mean, I think, he, oh, actually, he does not catch this ball. He picks it off and returns that for a touchdown. I think that. I yeah. think they called that a touchdown. Uh, yeah. it, it cuts off. It didn't. It didn't. But right. I mean, we, it. There's no play after that from Florida. But the, but the but the other part of this too is, okay, you're six four. What do you say, two ten, Garrett? Is that right? I think that's what he is. Yeah. Two oh eight. Either way, when when he when he makes this reception, if you don't go back to just. Your hands are on it. You need to catch this. What do you right there? It's in, and he loses that. That's a strength issue too. Um, I mean, I, I can't think of any six four two ten guy that catches it and then makes a turn and then loses it. That's that's bad. So this is bad and good. Um, I can't believe we held onto that. Yeah, great, great. You know, holding onto this is awesome. Um, I thought the route could have used a little bit more work initially. He needs to settle here more. He's kind well, of it, he kind it, of drifts. And then initially his 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 stem, if you want to go to the other angle for me. Yeah. So look at this corner. He knows inside. You know what I mean? Look where he's at inside right now. He needs to he needs to fake. Remember when Wallace would fake outside shoulder mm -hmm. that corner and then get him to widen? He needs to do that. And then the other part of this too, if you look from this angle, he does not come flat across. He drifts upfield into this defender. Yeah. So watch. Yeah, he, he starts outside the numbers and he's working toward the inside shoulder here hmm. instead of working towards the outside shoulder. That's what you're saying. Right. Well, he needs to threaten him because, I mean, the corner doesn't believe it. But then right here, look where he's breaking. Start at the 35, ends up at the 41-42. If he came flat, he would have been in front of that defender. Yeah, maybe six. Is... And when he got hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Peace out, Kylo. Thanks for stopping by, brother. Well, someone says another body catch. Does he body catch this? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a great catch. Don't get me wrong, but there's there's just, he could have made that play so much better, in my opinion. Or easier. <laughs> right, easier. Yeah, not take a huge hit. This game he's going against top 10 pick, Henderson, cornerback. Good job of using his hands, get him off him. 
and I just wanted to show this because of the it's a big play body catch again though um just the speed I, I thought he would outrun him here but you he had a good angle on that that, that that's gonna be an ma right I mean so Henderson's playing outside and bracketing him into the safety the safe what's the safety, the safety. here oh, his eyes are in the backfield yeah they run yeah, that. that's a, that's a safety issue wow okay Play action yeah, I thought he did a nice job with his hands here, but uh, like you said, I mean, Henderson's just keeping outside. I, st I mean, st you still made the play. I was just, I'm like, why is that open in the middle? Right. Yeah, their, eyes, their eyes were in the backfield there. Because mm -hmm. of that superstar can't make your selling that fake. Got to pick it up here. Get tired. What's, uh, what, what, what do you guys think? What did Henderson run the 40 in? Do we know? Mm, I can look real quick. Thought this was a really nice route here for him. Oh, Except he slows down. Four four six. Oh four, no, wait, six. no, that's that's the wrong guy. So good good fake here. Flashes his head back to the quarterback. Yeah. I say that repeatedly. I he thought just, that was gonna be a dig. Yeah. Fool fooled me. So good route. He just he doesn't think he's getting the ball, so he slows down. If he doesn't do that, he this is six. But just oh, wow. the speed to catch up to that, though, like to almost get that. J. Mike Chuck says four three nine. Okay. And he had the so, angle too. Appreciate yeah, it, so J. Then, Mike. So, uh, so what we're saying, Terry's probably what four four two then. I would. I wouldn't be surprised to see him run right in that same range right there. Okay. Um, so depending think, on depending on the play, I think Terry's um, I've a seen four three guy. High four three. I guess that's what we're just saying. Yeah, he's got he's got some he's got some long strides. Right. Well, but that's part of it too, though. Is that going to help him in the forty? Is he going to get out of those strides? Right, out of the break quick enough. Yeah. Or out of the blocks quick out enough. Out of the blocks. Yeah. I think he's a track guy, track background. Those guys typically, they know what they're doing on those straight line tests. <laughs> Worst defense, ACC or Pac-12. I'm gonna say uh, Big Twelve. I'm gonna say Big Twelve, probably <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I thought it was a bad route here, but good catch in traffic. Um, he needs to attack Henderson's outside, like Nick's been preaching all night. Just drifts upfield then. Yeah, it doesn't come flat either. Yeah. Man, make it easier on yourself. He's just not – I mean, Garrett said while we were watching Wallace, you know, Wallace is two years ahead of him as far as technique goes. But Terry has that – natural athletic ability that you can't teach you know so what are you looking for in a prospect Six four, two hundred five, lightning fast some but something you can work with really long shows some decent traits flashes every now and then can you get this guy in here make him a pro it's football every day turn him into something you know that's that's stuff that they're going to evaluate. And I think that's why I think Terry will probably get picked before Wallace, but they have a whole year of college to go, you know? Absolutely. So uh, I'm a block has a good pointer. He said, he's too busy thinking. And earlier he says, he reminds me of someone that's thinking about their route instead of running their route, you know? Yeah. And that, I think, I think that's true. You know, I, I was trying to find it because I read an article on Tamori and Terry last year when I was kind of first digging into his tape. That's a good move. Um, yeah, I and I know he kind of came up in a rough background, but I, for some reason I thought he was a later to football guy. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm I'm having a hard time finding it now. Not sure. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, tweet that out if you or message me if you see it. I'd like to put yep. that in my notes. Um, oh, can you go back again to the start of this? So this is again just not knowing defense. So. Go back to the very beginning here. Okay, so this backer in the flat, if you want to circle and can help out there, this, this backer is flying to the flat. So Terry's running a stick route is what it looks like. Yeah. So he should hitch up in this hole instead of drift to the backer, but he drifts 100%. to the back. 100%. Every offense has that built in. 
sit right here sit down you, you'd be right in that hole again he catches it i get that but I, I mean in the nfl these openings are smaller these are all little things yeah so if it's zone he sits if it's man he works outside here but i thought it's good good uh, catch good adjustment good oh, good football move. ball behind him um mm -hmm. yeah it makes a nice move after the catch he, he can move laterally better than most six four guys mm -hmm. he needs to get on the ladder <laughs> hit up that footwork king <laughs> yeah no kidding yeah so this place i love that guy's twitter i look at it all the time did his mm -hmm. instagram's fire too Just pure speed here, though. I mean, just burns the guy at the top of the route. Great ball. Dude, really watch, nice. watch this throw. He's getting hit. Like what? A Blackman? Yeah. yeah. Wow. A Blackman? You don't see that very often. That's a. He's, he's like jumping on that too. How does it get there? Yeah, I was, I was amazed. That's a, that. Bear, that he, his hand gets hit right after he throws it. I know Damn. on the money. But look, but look at him. Look at Terry. Even in those last, you know, twenty yards, he gained a number. Now, granted, they're starting to slow up a little bit, but he right. gained another two or three yards as he's running down the field against those guys. Yeah. Can you go back from the beginning on this one. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, the beginning is like cut off. It starts right there. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, right here. What? No. Yeah. So no, it's here. Sorry, I, I see it now. Just the beginning. I just wanted to lean in more. Yeah, give your quarterback more space. It's right there he does. That's good. Yeah, and he looks back a little early. Mm -hmm. But it's We're crazy. Right there, he looks here, back, but... and then he gets the separation. Another like three yards after he looks back, they both yeah. look back. That's, that's so funny. So these are basically opposite prospects. We got one guy, not a super – I mean, Tom Wallace is a good athlete. He's not terrible, but he's – very more... average athlete for a guy that's going to be drafted, I think. Yeah, and he's a little undersized. Not very physical either. But he's very good at catch point, good hands, very good, very good technique. And Terry's kind of the opposite. plucking the ball. I don't know that there's many guys better at plucking the ball in this class than than uh, Wallace. Bateman. But he, uh, man, yeah, Bateman, but Bateman's awesome. Yeah, Bateman's Bateman. <laughs> that was pretty good there. Yeah, good hands catch. Works well, back. He, Thought it was a better route. It kind of presses the outside better. So there, there are times you see some of those. He just needs a good coach to help clean up some of the footwork and, and get a little more consistent in some of that. Um, and I think if he would drop his hips more, I think that would be a key to a lot mm -hmm. of those things. Dick's an um, extra step here. He should just there and be able to break inside. But he has to yeah, go. go. It's, yeah. a, it's a three step to get inside. But yeah, but I think there's enough. It's it's not like watching him is gross. It's not like he is no. only an athlete, and there's nothing else to it there. Um, I think there's there's some skills that you can see. There there's some work being put in, and with the right technique, the right coach, the right system, I think he. I mean, he could blossom. He could absolutely blossom because I do think he's going to be one of those guys that wins the underwear Olympics, which we know only means so much. Um, but I think teams are going to fall in love with him because of that. Um, and, and just the raw tape. I mean, he, he makes plays. I mean, almost every game I'm trying to remember what, what it was. It was something to the extent of his average, uh, yards <laughs> per catch on his touchdowns was like 40 yards this year. Like he just, he just made a big play mm -hmm. on every single. And, and once, once he gets in the open field, he's gone. You're, you're not catching him. So. Um, I just think there's a there's a lot of tools to work with there, and you know just even working with the hubris of a lot of coaches, they're gonna say they're gonna see this raw prospect and athleticism. I think they're gonna take him and and want to do something with it. Why didn't he declare? It's a really good question. I honestly was kind of surprised that he didn't declare. Um, there's a couple guys. I mean, there were some of the running backs too that I was surprised that that they didn't declare, but. Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I I truly don't know. He'll only be a redshirt junior, so he'll technically have another season on top of this mm -hmm. if he wanted to. I don't think he will. Um, but yeah, I, I honestly don't know, and I never heard a reasoning as to why. 
Yeah, because I mean, he had a thousand yard year. You know, he, he could, I mean, it's a mess of an offense, but he could have declared. Um, I mean, he's not as raw as like Martavis Bryant was coming out of Clemson, but people didn't expect as much out of Martavis. I actually liked him out of Clemson. Um, but for me, it's we see prospects like Tamari and Terry every year. There's always a guy that's uber athletic. You have some tools you want to work with. He has to develop. But how often do they really develop? I mean, you have Martavis did, Josh Gordon did, but there's a lot of them that just they fizzle out. They Stephen Hill it. They, you know, there's and so to me, I don't know how often we can say, you know, it's worse at running back. I think you can work learn more as a receiver in the NFL. Running backs, I mean, like it's kind of is what it is. Like you're going to learn how to read a hole finally, you know, you didn't do that the first time. And, and you don't get as much time to figure it out either. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, he'll have time. To, I, I don't doubt that he could get drafted higher than Wallace. Um, he has tools. Uh, he's not, he's not bare there, but for me, all these little subtle things, you know, it could learn, it could not learn. And, you know, I, I think we always bank on, well, they're going to learn it. Well, not everybody learns it. And there's a but reason. Sure. You know, sure. and um, and I guess that that's why I would have Wallace higher than Terry because there's there's a lot of these little things of aiming point of routes, his hips, as we talked about, body catching, you know, all those little things that they add up. They add up more in the NFL than they do in college. Um, yeah, I, th- I think I I think that 2020, if we have a season, is way more important for Tamari and Terry than it is for Tyler Wallace. Way more important. I'd agree with we're, that. We're going to find out well, if Wallace you is coming off the stuff. ACL though too. So still I don't, I don't, not, today's world doesn't bother you, ACL. Well, but to me, it's either like Tom and Wallace can't walk anymore, <laughs> right? Or versus Tamar and Terry figures out how to be a wide receiver. Yeah. But even let, let's even say he, he only figures out some of the things that we hope he figures out. Mm-hmm. Like is his, floor now i mean his floor is he could bust out completely i get that but let's say like the you know not the ceiling not the floor the midpoint his midpoint to uh wallace's midpoint what where do you think those like where do you think those average out to because to me like if he doesn't improve a ton but he does in a few key areas uh i think he could absolutely be a big play receiver in the nfl that you know, could get 900 yards, a thousand yards and, and make some big, big, big plays, maybe a little inconsistent week to week. But I think like the average point for Wallace is, I don't know, like, uh, hopefully a PPR yards. monster. Well, how is it? I mean, a thousand or 900 yards cannot be an average for Tamari and Terry. It can't. That's, that's unbelievable. That's, not a ton of receivers even get a thousand yards. I mean, we had what, maybe eighteen last year. I mean, I'm rough enough top of my head. I mean, if if, if he's getting many. taken where we think he would take, get taken, kind of the midpoint expectation would be that he could develop. If you take a, a receiver in second round, which is kind of where I think he'll go, mm-hmm. wouldn't you kind of expect that guy? Like, you would be fine with it if he turned into eight hundred yards to a thousand yard receiver, right? Wouldn't that be kind of like that? That would be the hope, yeah. Yeah, so it wouldn't be like overly exceeding expectations. That would be twelve hundred yard receiver. You know, I'm just saying that's not the average receiver. for a raw guy. That's all I'm saying. Sure, I, I'm going. Maybe I'm not articulating it well, but kind of the what you would hope for them to be in the normal range of outcomes is kind of mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I think that's the thing for me. Like I think Wallace would have to exceed my expectations to really be fantasy relevant. Hmm. I mean, because I mean, I can see like best ball. I think tomorrow Ontario would be a better play if we just say it just from that perspective. Sure, because like you're saying, the big play, the high yeah. risk, high reward yeah. type guys. Yeah. Yep. But again, we talked about this earlier. The NFL is not about big receivers, and they're about the separation guys, which is Wallace, and that's that's why I lean that way. I mean, if we're if you had to put a hundred dollars down right now, who has more yards in the NFL career? I think more of you would agree with me that it'd be Wallace than it would be Terry. But if you want to shoot for ceiling. Then it's Terry, but so, I think it's a big risk. All three of us are Devi guys right now. If you're in a Devi draft, who are you taking 
before the other. I think he already uh, said Wallace. Yeah, I took uh, Wallace okay. in the draft that I paid money in. So <laughs> it's Wallace for me. Yeah, it would be it would be Terry for me. Uh, and I think we're being a little bit nitpicky because I don't have them that far apart. My guess is you probably don't have them that far apart either, right? Or, I don't know yet. I haven't, I haven't ranked them all Let me pull yet. mine up. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think look. I think I mean, but but I think right now that's where I'm leaning. But I think this is a huge year for Terry. If he doesn't develop any of those skills this year, it should be a concern. I would I would absolutely agree with that. Like if 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 all of those things that were concerns were not he doesn't he doesn't look better at any of those things. Then yeah, I'm yeah. I'm with you. I would be concerned about that as well. And the other thing I will say is, as much as I'm a big Tamori and Terry fan, I think the hype has caught up to how how much i liked him and maybe even slightly exceeded it so that's that's been the hard part for me is i actually haven't drafted him at all this year not because i don't like him as a player but now i'm starting to see him creep into the first round of debbie drafts and i'm not quite there even though i was a big fan i drafted him a ton last year in the fourth round the fifth round of a lot of drafts because I, I I like him as a player and upside, but I do think the hype has gotten maybe a tiny bit too high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. I got Terry six and I got Wallace seven, so they're like right okay. there with each yeah. other. Um, a good question over here on the side. Sorry, Jared, do you still have stuff with this? I was just gonna say next week. Just wanted to give everybody oh, yeah, a heads yeah. up. Next week we have another player coming on the stream to break down his mm-hmm. tape. Uh, we got Raymond Davis, running back from Temple. Last year as a true freshman, he almost hit 1,000 yards. He had 936 yards, eight touchdowns. Um, a guy that you definitely want to pay attention to in deeper Devi leagues, uh, campus to Canton leagues, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so he's coming on. Got another guy. I'm excited. Very, mm-hmm. very good head on his shoulders. Um, it's it's going to be fun to, to pick his brain on, mm-hmm. on his tape. Matt, Matt Bruning hooked us up with that, that connection, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Matt on that one. Yep. Good work. Thank you for that. Yeah. A good, good question over here on the side is uh, how did we see AJ Brown before last year? Um, I, I don't, I had him high. I got him in a few drafts. Um, but if we want to say like, how did we see AJ Brown before his last year? So like right where these guys were just before their last draft eligible year, he, I think I had him as my number one overall Debbie player. Um, I was really high on AJ Brown. He's a beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the record, you said you were six and seven, uh, Jay Wack mm-hmm. on Terry and Wallace. I have him five and seven. So, okay. Yep. Who do you have behind Terry? Do you have Devontae Smith? Devontae Smith is behind Terry and ahead of Wallace. We need to, we need to put, we need to get Smith on here with like Amon Ross A. Brown or somebody. Oh, wait. That was everybody. Hold on. Mine might be different. I think I think Devonta Smith. Man, he's is good. he's good. Mm-hmm. He's a smooth operator. And, and that's the uh, thing. I think I think these guys where they're gonna go are could be values because people are gonna love. I mean, these are like late first, early second round guys. Even these, Wallace's. These receivers are good next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Running and there's next. there's quite a few good ones at the top end of the twenty two class as well. That's the tough part. Like you know, right now, like. You know, you get him a year early, but you know George Pickens looks really good. Oh man! Uh, you know Garrett Wilson looks He's really nasty good too. David Bell, so, David Bell looks really good. I think David uh, Bell's not a good enough athlete. It's true. I, I'm with you on that, but I think he's. I think he slept on a little bit uh, overall. I can't wait till we break down uh, Coxie and Surratt. Those are two guys I like in this class too. Deeper, like this. deeper wide receivers. I haven't really watched as much of of Surratt yet. I need to uh, I need to look at his game a little bit more. Big physical basketball player type JJ receiver. I think a white side like um, better man, athlete that, than him. That makes me athlete, makes me really happy and really sad all at the same time. Yeah, and then you get uh, yeah. There's I mean there's a lot of receivers that we will get to eventually. There's, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, da- Daimani Brown, North Carolina. So. Anything you guys are working on that you want to tell the stream about before we wrap this one up? Uh, I, I I think we've we've talked a long time tonight, so uh, <laughs> I, I I don't think there's anything that special that I need Dude, to. I'm tired. I, I don't think there's anything that special. Follow me on Twitter at Dynasty Price. Mm-hmm. I guess my only thing is I um 
I have a new publication. I haven't really advertised it much is it's all strategy and philosophy for your dynasty startup draft. How to, strategy. How to for, yeah. Strategy is W would say good one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, cause we talk a lot about prospects and stuff, but how do you set up your board? How do you think what happens when this happens in a draft? What do you do? Uh, it's all of that. So if you're curious on that, hit me up on Twitter and I can hook you up. Yes. Do that as I draw. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the first time we've used it tonight. <laughs> no, I've been using it all night. Oh, Abby. Oh, that's right. We're not on the same thing. I forgot. Yeah, you switched yeah, underscore Nick Whalen, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate it. It's fun having the questions on the side. Yeah. Till next time. Tune in next week. Again, we got Raymond Davis running back from Temple coming on the stream. So <laughs>